Hello and welcome into the Rotowire Fantasy Soccer Podcast. I am Andrew Laird, Senior Soccer Editor of Rotowire, joined by a special guest today, uh, somebody I've been wanting to have on the podcast for a while uh, since uh, my So Rare journey has started. Um, he is the creator of So Rare Data, or So Rare Data, as he uh, pronounces it himself, but uh, <laughs> maybe I'm, I'm slightly Americanizing or non-mathematically saying it, but um, Maxime, you, you go by Maxime HG, um, yeah. And I think it's because a lot of people are intimidated to uh, pronounce yeah. your surname. So if you could just give it to me so that I don't have to uh, mess it up myself, that would be great. Yeah, the French pronunciation is actually Agen Bourget. Uh, I wouldn't have come but, close. Yeah, but I'm really curious to see how or to hear how American people pronounce it. So, but yeah, people call me HG because it's it's simpler, basically. And I don't want to give them a hard time pronouncing my name. So, yeah. <laughs> Um, my last name's fairly easy to pronounce uh, for us Americans. I don't know if we struggle overall just uh, pronouncing them, but um, I, I joked around. I think it was with uh, with Black, who uh, we're both uh, friendly with. That uh, I usually yeah. try to get my podcast guests to say uh, surnames first if I don't know how to say them, and yeah. then whatever they say is what I go with, whether it's right or wrong. Um, so thank you yeah. for uh, for using no that. But thank you, uh, thank you for coming on. And yeah. uh, thank you for creating what I think might be one of the most impressive uh, websites I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, thanks. Yeah. And uh, yeah, what can I say? Great if you love it. Um, yeah, maybe we'll talk about it later, but it's actually one year old, like in five days. Oh, all right. So, so time goes fast, especially when you're under basically a 10 month lockdown. <laughs> So yeah, um, pretty cool stuff. Gives you plenty of time to uh, to work on the site though, so that's a that's yeah. a benefit, I guess. Yeah. So you've obviously been on So Rare for quite a while. What um what drew you to the site? I know I'll be honest. I listened to your pod uh, your podcast with Hybe on the the regular the kind of the main So Rare podcast. So I don't want to force you to go through all of that again. But I think at least for our listeners, it be nice to hear like kind of how you got I know you had more of a blockchain background before so rare specifically so if you could just walk through that a little bit so uh, we know who we're talking to yeah so yeah I'm actually still working full-time for a company called blockchain partner and um, uh, basically the leading um, consulting firm in France for blockchain technologies and so I'm the CTO of the company so yeah I have a a pretty good technical background uh, surrounding blockchain technology. Sure. Um, and yeah, uh, Nicolas, so, the, so our CEO, was working with a company called Stratum in France. And um, we interacted with him um, through Blockchain Partner. And when he launched Sora, um, I, I say Sora, he says Sora. I don't know uh, what's the <laughs> correct pronunciation, but I say Sora anyway. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, he told us, yeah, we're launching the game. Um, would you like to see uh, what's going on? And I was fir at first interested in the um, technical part of it because they were on a blockchain that was called Loom and was really scalable uh, compared to Ethereum right now. Um, and so, yeah, I had a call with Adrien, the, studio, the, the CTO of Sora. And uh, when they started launching the game, I deposited some ETH, or some ETH, ETH, I don't know how you say it. I go back ETH. and forth, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, bought some random players, and uh, that was back in 2019. Um, and then um, when the game started to be a bit uh, bigger with the additions uh, with the additions of uh, yeah big teams like when Nantes arrived on Sorare uh, basically it was i think uh, October 2019 or something uh yeah 2019 yeah that's a long time ago actually <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah i started building my um, own database so um, i can uh, basically um, have an edge on other people because I knew how to get into Loom, so the network they were using. And so I had like all the um, auctions data, all the market data uh, directly into my own database. Um, I could uh, auction, uh, bid on an auction while the website was down. 
Um, actually, it's something you cannot do anymore with uh, the current uh, <laughs> system, but that was pretty fun, actually. Um, but yeah, and um, when the game got bigger and bigger in March 2020, then, I decided to build a website that was easier for me to browse and to do things. And um, yeah, uh, started to go public like um, in June. I released the website in June. I started a Twitter account uh, yeah, m uh, last March. And um, yeah, from there, it just got bigger and bigger every month. And uh yeah, it's it's a, a fun and wide ride actually I think and uh, but yeah you start be, you start buying Belgian players you don't even know who <laughs> they are you don't even know if they are playing yep and and then you have a, yeah myself um, um, I have a gallery of like 200 players some of them I don't I still don't know who they are <laughs> uh, and I'd never watched them play. But uh, some of them are really cool. I own like Bayern players, and that's that's a really great experience to actually own a card and uh, root for this player when he's playing because you actually can win something out of um, a player performance. One so of... yeah, basically my very short <laughs> um, our journey until now. One of my favorite things about so rare is. Uh turning out to be passionate about a specific player that I, A, didn't know existed a week ago, uh, B, have never seen in person, and C, have n or never have watched uh, on on television or anything, and yet um, I'll, I'll become their biggest fan as long as they uh, have a little green scork uh, one week in a, in a specific game week. Yeah. Um, so why make, why share everything that you had? Like, <laughs> Thank you for doing that. But like, what what was the moment where you said, uh, like you said, you wanted to to create the website just so it was easier to kind of get through everything. But uh, there's an there's another step after that of deciding you're going to share this with other people for free, um, which is a big step because um, I don't know how anybody plays so rare without using so rare data, and so. Um, yeah. I think that site alone is responsible for a lot of people either wanting to play or or getting better as they play. Yeah, I guess uh, I couldn't play Sora. I mean, I, I would be frustrated without Sora data right now because, um, and I, it's okay that Sora doesn't show everything, doesn't show every data, doesn't show the the story of. Um, all auctions, all offers. If you dig in deep into the website, you can find anything that you want, but it's not displayed like uh, it's not shown like yeah. easily. But um, yeah, I, I didn't really think it through uh, because I think if I kept everything to uh, for myself, uh, I probably would have been a great solar manager. <laughs> but actually, I'm a I'm, I would say average solar manager. Like last game week, I just managed to get the the Division Four All Star F reward. Mm -hmm. um, but mainly, it's an opportunity for me to build a website from scratch. It's also a great thing to me because um, on my full time work, I'm not coding so much anymore. I'm talking with clients. Um, um, I have a technical expertise, but I don't do uh, web development or backend development uh, that much. Right. So that was a great opportunity for me to keep building my um, technical expertise. And yeah, it's a great opportunity to build a company um, around Soria, around something I love. It's, that is uh, blockchain and also soccer. Uh, or I say football in France. But, yeah, that's okay. fine. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's, it's a great opportunity and I, I don't think I would have been, um, uh, let's say more profitable with, uh, keeping all the data to myself, uh, rather than building a great website. Hopefully I hope it will be great at some point, but, uh, um, and uh, helping, um, all managers to, um, have a good uh, sorry experience because if I keep everything to myself, m most probably someone is going to do something about it and someone is going to do a website 
uh, doing what I could. And um, also, if I build something that helps manager, it has an impact on the value of my cards because if lots of players play, then they, if I have good cards, <laughs> they will get sold for sure. much more than I bought them. So, um, yeah, opportunity and also helping Soya and the ecosystem. And um, to myself, yeah, it's a great experience on the technical, but also on the um, personal side. I've met tons of people that have, well, met virtually because I can't go out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we, we talk uh, to uh, the same I would say uh, American community like uh, Surface Black and uh, the guys over there. And it's great talking to people that you would have never talked to mm-hmm. um, without uh, without spending money on digital cards. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, a great experience overall. And um, I definitely do not regret um, uh, releasing all the data to everyone. Yeah, I think what's what was amazing to me uh, when I started and I had no blockchain experience at all. Um, in fact, all of the blockchain experience I have is just with so rare. So it's not even that, uh, not that I've taken off with it, but, um, the fact that everything is kind of publicly available and so rare themselves, uh, you know, include some information on their site, but the amount that you have on, on so rare data, just, it's like, we think we have this much and it turns out there's actually this much and being able to see it all. I, I was scrolling through the um, completed offers today, which was a page that like I knew existed, but I hadn't really clicked through it. And I, I lost myself in it. I was 15, 20 minutes in just looking line by line. And I, uh, it's totally a site that you can get lost on because yeah. um, there's just so much there. Um, is there any, was there any point where you, uh, thought that maybe we were sharing, not that we were sharing too much because it's all public anyway, but that maybe there were some things that they didn't want public that was going to be yeah. out like all the offer, you know, private offers or whatnot. I think so as the the best mindset for a company on um, doing something on blockchain, they are okay with everything being uh, public and they don't really care about showing stuff that is public anyway. But one thing was very difficult for some SOA data users was showing ETH balance uh, on the website um, because for some people it gives an edge uh, because you know that you have more uh, more, um, more money available than another one so you can outbid them uh, to the point that they can't bid anymore. Yeah. And um, yeah, I had a lot of people asking me, yeah, can you... <laughs> not show this please and um, yeah I said sorry but if I do it it's because it's public and someone else can do it and if someone else with the technical abilities can do it then I mean everyone should be on the same level yeah. uh, why the guys um, able to get this info should keep it uh, keep it to themselves um, so yeah that was one instance that was like pretty tricky but um i think since everything is public you can't go against that i mean um the manager stats section also is pretty controversial for some people because you know exactly what someone has spent on the game i mean exactly sometimes it's a bit off but like it's basically the the big picture is correct yeah like you know that he spent like 50th on cards and got back 100th for some uh, for some example, um, and some people are afraid that tax um, uh, I don't know uh, IRS in in the US could come on Soyadeta and see oh this guy <laughs> has made like uh, 50k's on on Soya right and he didn't tell us anything so and to these people I say. Um, sorry, but you are playing actually a um, completely transparent game. Mm-hmm. And if Solar Data is not there, they will find a way to get the info and to <laughs> call you and say, hey, you owe us money. So um, it, the blockchain and all this transparency stuff is a completely different mindset of what we're used to. 
um, and for some people, it's very well, pretty hard to adapt to it. Yeah, I think there's there's a lot of a lot about SoRare that is uh, conceptually very new to people, and so um, oh, people don't like new things, and so or changes yeah. at least. So I think it, that obviously can throw them off. Um, so you did the uh, the SoRare podcast with Hybe in I think it was December. And at yeah. that time, the, the, he asked you a question of what page on the site you thought was, uh, I believe, w was uh, underutilized as much yeah. uh, that you thought. And I was shocked that the answer was the card finder because I don't know how you play without that card finder. Like, um, it just makes it so much easier to find what you're looking for. Is that still the case now that we're, today is March 26th? Um, do you think that people are taking advantage of the right pages on so rare data. I think now right now I, I wouldn't say it's the card finder that is uh underused but um I would I don't use personally the card finder but I'm not trading so much and I'm not looking so much for cards so it, it maybe doesn't apply to me but um one thing I use every game week before every game week is uh, the lineup builder and it was called Players Breakdown for some time, and mm -hmm. I renamed it to the Lineup Builder now. And I mean, the Sorel Lineup Builder is fine. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it, it's cool. It it does what it it supposed to, it's supposed to. But um, I mean, having a kind of sandbox to do lineups in advance, also building um, lineups with other stats that are uh, that um, are shown on the so lineup builder is something I really like, and uh, it's not that used. Uh, it's like I released it like uh, three or four months ago, and I would say only six thousand lineups have been have been built hmm. um, through it. So I'm looking to change it a bit. Um, it's it's not really accessible on mobile. Maybe it's that's why also people <laughs> don't use it that much. But um, I'm planning to uh, display something called, uh, if you know stats, you already he heard of it. It's called expected something. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm looking to release something called expected so, um, SO5, so uh, an expected SOR score uh, based on every stat. Uh, over the past five games, and also stats from um, the player opponent. Um, so I'm looking forward to releasing this feature like uh, before next game week. Oh, uh, and hopefully people won't get too excited and say, "Oh, he says like <laughs> says that he's expected to score 70 points, so he will score 70 points." But I guess that's. Um, um, expected goals in the soccer industry are widely used. I don't know why, but uh, some people rely on it. So I, I guess it has some kind of uh, value. And if I can do something that is uh, actually using all the stats I have, um, and uh, I think I can do something pretty good. And it could help like people um, really easily see who are the, the players that um, have basically a good matchup. Mm -hmm. um, and also that will help me do, uh, build like automatic lineups uh, for people. If you want to, if you don't have time to build lineups uh, and want to like get so that has best five players, yep. like you click on a button and it says play those guys. Um, and so it opens a ton of things Um that are really cool if I build this. So yeah, that's, to answer your question, lineup builder not used at all, and I'm looking forward to um, make it more accessible and uh, make it even more useful. Uh, as somebody who works on uh, fantasy point projections for uh, mostly daily fantasy stuff, um, if you project somebody for seventy points and they score sixty eight, you're going to get complaints. Yeah, just so you know. Yeah. <laughs> I know, and it, that's why um, I need to do a good job, like uh, branding it not too aggressively and saying, yeah, uh, here's the formula, here's how we are going to uh, compute this value, 
it's going to be used this way. Uh, use it if you want to, but don't complain. We don't care about your complaints. Really, <laughs> I, I have no time for it's something I, I'm pretty, I don't know, sad to say, but I do not have time to answer to someone that said like uh, he was supposed to score 70, he scored 68. To me, 68 for 70 expected is Fantastic. very good. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's mostly that people don't understand what projections really are. And so yeah. uh, that's more their problem than than ours. But um, so then what what are the more popular pages on the site? Like I, I was curious, like kind of what the masses use, because I I have this, you know, certain pages that I go to all the time. Yeah. Um, but I'm curious, like what what are the more popular ones on so rare data? Um, basically, the Game Week Center and the um, SO5 results page is yeah, pretty much uh, the number one section. Um, and um, yeah, because, you know, <laughs> I think a page where all your lineups are um, is basically something that is really simple, but is not on Soria. Yeah. And uh, it, it, yeah, it's pretty crazy. But yeah, uh, that's an easy, easy page that is, has been in there for like, the beginning of the website and um so people are used to it and people like it so um, yeah it's pretty much used and um also ongoing oceans page it's pretty has pretty good traffic um but i i wouldn't say that as one section of the 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 website that is used uh more than another one, but also side games are pretty, yeah, uh, the, the play section on the website um, has good good, uh, good traction right now. And uh, that's something I'm really happy about. Uh, building side game is something really fun and I'm looking forward to do more on this. Um, but yeah, uh, let's say Game Week Center and side games. I think I'm glad you brought up the side games because I was going to bring it up anyway at some point. Um, yeah, it does seem like uh, yours are the most popular side games. Uh, I don't know if they possibly have been around longer and that's why, but it seems like all of the uh, kind of the big players on so rare play your side games yeah. um, was were those. Did you set those up mostly because you wanted the cards just to have more utility somewhere else, or was there kind of a an alternate um, reason for setting those up originally? Yeah, I guess more utility is always good, so that's a reason. But um, I guess no one was really building a side game side games platform, and since I had built the lineup builder, I was able to have pretty easily. Um, uh, yeah, uh, um, a lineup builder for other competitions than um, than uh, SO5. So that was pretty natural, I would say. And um, you see, like, um, uh, competitions or side games organized on the Discord uh, server, the, the Sora Discord server, that was pretty painful. So <laughs> also um, proposing something a bit more exciting and also a bit more... Um, not exciting, but pretty more uh, uh, UX friendly, I mm -hmm. would say, um, was something I had in mind. And also, I, I want to explore this um, use case because um, right now I'm struggling to see a good business model for uh, websites that uh, only rely on side games because how do you make money uh, if you're a company that has to distribute prices to people so that they can come and yep. uh, enjoy your game and also um, not make them pay for entering the competition. Um, right now I'm operating in France, so gambling issues are, <laughs> are issues I don't want to sure. uh, be a part of and um, you have to do a free to enter competitions. Um, but I want to see if, uh, I don't know, um, companies or football teams or even uh, players want to uh, brand uh, a, a Sora Data competition uh, with their company or with their name or something. And uh, also maybe um, have companies like 
uh, say, okay, we'll distribute like uh, 10 rewards to the best 10 players, uh, but uh, to enter the competition, you have to sign up on our website, etc. Um, so that's also a way to explore if I can uh, make money. That's also a thing um, through side games, mm -hmm. but without um, having like um, 10 euro or $10 uh, fee to enter a competition. So all the all of them are, I guess we'll call it SO11, right? Um, yeah. Do you have... Except the cups. The right, cups except the cups. Five. Um, do you think you'll stick kind of with those size teams or are you open to any sort of side game that you can think of? I guess SO11 or SD11 because it's not on Soria. Um, it's the most natural thing because like there are 11 players on the, on yeah. the pitch. Um, so I think it's pretty natural and, uh, the more the cards, um, are released, the more people will be able to actually line up 11 players. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not really afraid of, uh, people saying, yeah, I don't have enough players. I think, especially if we see another scarcity being added to the game, um, that won't be a problem. Uh, but I guess 11 players with four subs is something I like. And if I see something that's um, better or uh, looks fun, uh, why not? Uh, I have tweeted yesterday to Antoine Griezmann because he, he posted <laughs> a tweet saying I have a team. And something I really want to see is like giving the same players to every person playing in a competition, like the same cards. And you have like 50 cards. He has like... 40-ish cards mm -hmm. and say let's see who's the best manager uh, let's meet and let's uh, let's do a cup and uh, he didn't answer I didn't expect him to answer but, <laughs> not uh, yet not yet he did that that would have been fun but uh, why not give like a player a signed jersey to the winner or a card of the player if he, he's on Sora but yeah that's also a side game I want to explore and something I, I, I think I, I'm going to do next month Wow. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. I didn't. I'm, more utility is always nice. I'm not sure we all take advantage of it like we should, but um, just having more options for these cards that, um, with all the stuff that went on with uh, football index and footstock, yeah. that people are concerned about what happens. Um, but we kind of forget that we own these cards and can kind of take them anywhere. So if we can use them in other places, it kind of gives us a little more uh, comfort, I guess, in, in investing more of our money, uh, into the site. Um, so it seems like a lot of this stuff, uh, comes from community suggestions and this kind of yeah. stuff that you build. Um, what, what were some of the bigger ones that came from the community that you've implemented onto the site? Well, that's a good question. I, I would say pretty much everything. Um, the, the main features are there because I needed them as a manager when I was building the website. Um, but yeah, I mean, sometimes it's just me as a player that sees an opportunity building a feature because I need this feature to play the game. Uh, but sometimes just people reaching me, uh, reaching out on Discord or on Twitter saying, hey man, can you do this? And I have to say sometimes it's a bit frustrating to have so many people saying, hey, can you do this? And, <laughs> but sometimes it's great because it's actually great ideas and I love implementing great ideas. Um, but nothing comes up to my mind right now. But uh, uh, I do let's think... say that points to next reward. Like the last thing I added to the SO5 results uh uh, page that's something like you guys on the US Discord were asking me and I think that is a great idea and and I'm also looking forward to add uh, all the available rewards uh, like say it says right now uh, 28 points for example to the next reward but you can click on a little arrow on the side and see all the rewards that are available for this tournament and see you need 36 points to the next next one, uh, etc. Um, and that's the kind of stuff that uh, I don't know if Soya is going to build it uh, soon or ever. And 
that's the kind of features that for core, hardcore solar players, that is actually very helpful because you don't have to go to the standings and see where you are and where the others are, uh, where the reward is, what's the next threshold, etc. So, um, yeah, anything that helps uh, managers is something I uh, want to implement. Do you think this... Um... Do you think you build stuff like obviously the site was built be well it started because you wanted to use it yourself as a player and i think the best thing about the site is that it clearly is is built uh by somebody who plays and there are a lot of tools uh for different fantasy games that are built by people who think they know how the game is played uh, but they don't actually play it and so there's some there's some big gaps that in terms of what people want versus what people actually need um but the, I think just the way that, that everything is broken down is, is clearly uh, from somebody who plays. So that's, uh, that's definitely appreciated. Um, one of the things that I was curious, and not to drop a, hey, can you add this uh, in the middle of a podcast, <laughs> but I'm going to do it anyway. Because um, you mentioned that, because uh, basically everything that's on the site now is, um, is kind of uh, what's going on now or what has happened previously. And you were talking about yeah. this expected score which is now kind of projecting what's going to happen in the future. Um, I was curious, uh, instead of uh, expected fantasy points or SO5 points, um, kind of an expected, and I, I look at this on a player level of uh, trying to figure out where uh, everyone will be using their cards. So like if you have, if you could see all the uh, Robert Lewandowski rare cards, and you know you can play them in Champion Europe D4, D3, All-Star D4, D3, and where those cards tend to get played yeah. uh, to give you kind of a better idea of if I if I have one, uh, do I want to play it where everyone else has one as kind of a hedge or, do, or is nobody playing it here so I want to play there? Is that doable? Yeah, everything is doable. Uh... <laughs> You need. You just need to put it uh, to put the work. But um, yeah, that's really interesting. And um, there's a part of the game itself that I didn't explore so much yet. It's like what you say is very interesting. Like um, um, when you saw like all these guys paying tens of uh, thousands of dollars for Cristiano Ronaldo or Mbappe cards. And the next time you go on the game week center for the next game week and you see that uh, only 50% of yeah. the Mbappes were played, it's something that is really interesting, but um, I didn't uh, right now find a way to actually help people to build their lineup according to these stats. And uh, there's so much work to do and so much things to explore. But yeah, just saying like, Oh, you're going to play Mbappe here. Just so you know, uh, last, uh, let's say, last five game weeks, um, there were many used in D4 or many used in D3. That's something that is, I would say, pretty easily doable. Um, but at the same time, you have to display this kind of information uh, the right way. Mm -hmm. The fact is, I'm only... Uh, let's say a full stack developer i'm not a ux designer or something and sometimes i struggle i can show an info a piece of information but i don't know how to show it so that's uh, the struggle for these kind of things but yeah definitely um uh, helping people understand also do you really need to put uh or to use two super rare cards in d3 is it really worth it um my feeling is that is definitely not worth it because the um, the um, like if you see the previous five or ten game weeks for example i think consistently the d3 um let's say threshold to get a reward is lower than actually the d4 yeah um a threshold so I, I would say that for champion europe for example i don't know for the other divisions but and that is something people don't know 
and people don't really yeah see because if if because otherwise we do we would have seen like the, um, um a shift between um those thresholds mm-hmm. but um uh yeah it, but how do you show the information is something really difficult and um also make it pretty accurate is also uh, also a struggle but yeah something i have in mind and uh, that would be very helpful but something like the the next step for solar data overall is <laughs> let solar data build these lineups for you mm-hmm. and if you if you don't uh, trust us or if you don't trust uh, math or anything that's okay but just if you don't want to, uh, if you're like um, 10 minutes before the deadline and you don't know who you are going to play, uh, let's try uh, our suggestions. But also, why not letting uh, other managers building lineups for people? Like, that's something that is already available and that's something pretty much no one knows that if you go to the lineup builder of a, of a Sora manager, like uh, let's say Zuol, uh, he has a big Gary. You can build the lineups that you think are good for him and tell him, hey, look, I built your lineups. Uh, do you want to use them? And if you use them, like give something to me if you want <laughs> rewards or something. And also that makes a lot of sense with side games because if you are in the world class league, that is the best league in in the Solar Data leagues. Well, you have. Um, a good reputation you can say hey look where I'm where I am and um, if you want me to build your lineups I can do it and uh, uh, we can find some kind of deal to do it so yeah uh, it opens a lot of opportunity but yeah the the, be- the main thing would be building lineups uh, automatically and um, uh, the information that you, you talk about in your question uh, would be really helpful to do this do you think um, more of the more of the improvements that you put in now are for the kind of the hardcore users with lots of cards or do you think like do the the suggestions that you get tend to come from people who have played for a while and they just say I always do this but I think you might be able to do it better or is it new people that say hey have you ever thought of implementing this whatever new idea they have I think it's both, but um, the sad thing about Solar Data is that um, if you're a beginner and you don't know how Solar works, uh, maybe Solar Data will help you a bit. But um, for example, I don't uh, support rookie leagues anymore because there are so many players, and it's not that interesting to me because. It's basically common cards, and common cards are different from blockchain yeah. cards, so it's a bit difficult to handle them properly. But um, I say both pe- both kind of people ask me stuff, and I like people that come on the website, don't know anything about it, and say, "Hey, why this?" <laughs> for example, because I need this kind of re- uh, feedback. But I think anyway that Solar Data is built for players that want to um, go deep. Uh, in the Sora experience, um, but also having like some features, uh, for example, like uh, auto building, auto lineup building, is also something that is in- interesting for new players because you don't really know how to do it first, and uh, you maybe want a kickstart for your team and also see suggestions. So I'm still trying to have uh, features that are good for any kind of user, but. Um, clearly I'm s- still building for those who have, uh, let's say 20 cards or something, or at least are trying to scout for more cards and buying more cards. Yeah. I would assume those are the people who are using the site more anyway. So, yeah. um, it makes certainly makes sense to, to build stuff in their, in their directions. Um, do you think the new scarcity that is coming out at some point changes so rare data much, or is it just another another page, you know, just longer pages. Yeah, I don't know. It, it all depends on how they do it, because if you have another way to sell these cards, that's uh, another thing I have to implement. And 
let's say if it's not blockchain cards, it will be very difficult. But uh, on the other side, I don't see how they would introduce a new scarcity and not use blockchain for it. <laughs> right. So I don't expect, uh, yeah, it's an NFT, but it's not on a blockchain. So it's not an NFT. It would be weird. It's okay for common cards. It's onboarding stuff. Okay. But uh, for um, uh, a new scarcity, I don't think they will not use blockchain. So... Uh, but I don't expect new scarcity to come up before they find a scaling solution. And so when they do, I will be knowing a lot more about what's coming up for me. <laughs> <laughs> do you think it changes the game much? No, no, no. I think it improves it. Um, and for the um, third party ecosystem, it's also uh, very interesting to have like uh, um, more scalability and more, well, have a... Like before uh, on Loom, you were actually bidding on the blockchain. And so mm -hmm. anyone was able to do anything on the blockchain directly. Um, so that was really great because um, I could have, um, so I uh, um, let people bid on Solar Data directly and not go on Solar, for example. Hmm. And so that means if you have, if we go back to this kind of way, of using the blockchain for every user action, or not lineups, etc., but market actions. Um, great stuff can happen. You can have a learning system that is built by something of somebody else or someone else, and uh, um, you can have uh, other marketplaces uh, being built. Um, so scalability and uh, layer two solutions are more than welcome, but it takes time to build them. So I expect them to use maybe layer two solutions like in six months or something, Q4, right. Q3 and Q4 maybe. Uh, do you play around with any other NFTs? Um, I, I own like five crypto kitties or something. Okay. And uh, no, not really. I don't have, but I don't see any NFTs that have the same utility that uh, so are cards. So I'm pretty much like, man, no, it's it's just I don't like crypto art, for example, because I'm not much a fan of art anyway. But um, I think like what's good with Soria is that you can use them a thousands of way and. Um, that's not the same thing for uh, crypto kitties or um, or crypto art and anything that is not related to real life is very difficult to give an utility to, um, except if you build a whole game on um, on the blockchain with NFTs. So there's no way you would have gotten involved without the game itself. Yeah, no way. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't collect football cards. Uh, I love Panini, but um, uh, as a child, I didn't like buy uh, football cards. So I think what does it what does it for so as the fantasy football game, not the collection aspect. So what you've obviously seen so rare change quite a bit over the last two years, I guess, year and a half yeah. that you've been on it. Um, do you think it looks drastically different? In a year, yeah. and if it does, then oh no, you think it's yeah, yeah, it it does. Oh okay, it, it's like the new colors and the new <laughs> the new pages are that's that's crazy. And um, quite frankly, when like they did like some major changes like in at the end of 2020, and I didn't like it at all. I, I was like, it's so much worse than before, <laughs> but. Uh, like when they introduced like new colors for lineups, uh, builders, or, you know, each division has its own color, yep. etc. They did stuff that I, I know it's really difficult to do them, but sometimes they really stuff that is like, come on, like this flashing green. What, what, what do you want to do with it? But, <laughs> but at least they are. No, but the great thing we saw is that they adapt yeah and uh, when they have feedbacks that say hey guys don't do this please um they just accept it and they don't take it personally or something so they move on and do better like so like one time they <coughs> released like a recommended price for cards yeah like something i would never do because 
like it's it's the same thing as the expected score like uh <laughs> if you recommend a price that is uh, lower than the price that is paid on the market for example for the next car that is bought uh you will get people say hey uh don't recommend anything and what they were doing is basically the same thing they were saying like oh you want to sell uh, a starting goalkeeper oh just say uh 0.0 uh, 0.0.1 uh, F for a uh, goalkeeper that is like $20 or something and people were like don't do this if you can't do it correctly yeah and the feature lasted like six hours or something yeah it was, it was very quick I remember <laughs> yeah I think we, one of the funny things uh, having been on this on the site for a while now uh, I joined in November which feels like 10 years ago at this point um, yeah. but the the difference in the feedback channel on SoRare, uh, the difference between the, the SoRare feedback and the SoRare data feedback is uh, SoRare data feedback is suggestions that you either implement like very quickly or people kind of explain why whatever they're asking for either. Sometimes it already exists and we just didn't know where it was uh, or other people kind of explain that um, what they're looking for really doesn't matter. It's something like that. Yeah. But like even listening back to some of the uh, early SoRare podcasts, um, goalkeeper pricing and new scarcity has been a topic for five months now yeah. um, and obviously hasn't changed. We saw, I mean, we're seeing $1,000 MLS goalkeepers, uh, $2,000 MLS goalkeepers at this point. So it's uh, those are getting a little crazy. But um, I think the, your ability to get uh, ideas implemented on your own site and obviously uh, you have a kind of the two ways of one, there's only one of you working on this, Yeah. but also because there's only one of you, you can do things yeah. fairly quickly. Um, but it's like the, the fundamental big issues on so rare are still kind of out there. Um, and you luckily don't have to deal with those issues, but anything that somebody's looking for on so rare data is kind of, it seems to be implemented right away. Yeah. Uh, so you're digging yourself in a little bit of a hole here because the expectations are people give you a suggestion and within hours it's completed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I, I really like to ship things fast. And actually I work in a way that I don't like to keep things uh, on hold for too, too many times or too many, you know, like too long. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, so if I build something, I'm going to release it like the next day or the next six hours after. So uh that's also why i'm not um releasing big feature big features like uh um the next week or something i just like i do something if it works i release it and that's fine and sometimes it doesn't work <laughs> and people say hey it doesn't work and i try to fix it uh but what you say is interesting on sora because they have to deal with a free market and that's the, a completely different story than mine because I can do whatever I want on my website because it's mine and basically if it if it pleases people it's good. Um, but yeah, uh, goalkeeper goalkeeper pricing is something that is really difficult to do, to change because if you do something to lower the prices, then uh, the guys who bought like. Uh, <laughs> for a crazy amount of money, goalkeepers will say, hey, what are you doing to me? And it's the same thing about rewards uh, for competitions. Like, if they try to reduce the number of uh, rewards or the number of um, players that get uh, money uh, in SO5 competitions, like, people will get yeah. their forks out and say, uh, don't do this. They tried to do it once, but... I can assure you, I closed the website for one hour because the community was so mad. And I was so mad because they didn't consult anyone of the community before releasing changes. And it was obviously a bad change. Mm -hmm. And they said one hour later, OK, guys, we did a mistake. We'll, we'll go back to um, the, the old system. Uh, so that's fine. But um, yeah, sometimes they try to do 
uh, stuff without involving the community because they think people will get too biased on uh, if you ask Zero uh, who has like 50 Unix, he will say, yeah, change the rewards uh, for the D1 or the D2 because it suits me. But I think the community is clever enough to uh, give them good recommendations for yeah. the well-being of the game overall. And um, But they have to do uh, they have to, um, yeah, deal with so many things that are completely different from me changing data or releasing a new feature. I think one of the things that blew me away about the SoRare community is how uh, pro SoRare they are, like the company itself, that yeah. obviously uh, as long as SoRare exists, then everything that we've bought has a value. Uh, so the company still being around is obviously a huge plus to everybody, but I, you just don't see that in a lot of other, certainly yeah. not other fantasy formats um, or really any, I mean, I, I'll be honest, I don't, I haven't bought any other NFTs, but it just doesn't seem like um, the, so many people are so pro so rare in terms of like, they want the company to succeed. And yeah. it, I think it goes beyond just because if it doesn't, then we're all stuck with these digital cards that have no utility. But I don't know that's a, that's a one thing that just like blew me away about that because the 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 daily fantasy community in the states um, I wouldn't say is the most pro uh, business in terms of the companies that pro companies that run them. So it was yeah. kind of uh, it, almost enlightening to see how many people actually just like SoRare, and I think a lot of it is not just the transparency of the game that you display on your site, but just the transparency from the team of we're either thinking of doing this or we're, we, we heard you and we're working on it. You just don't get that a lot in, in other games at all. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, but I guess we'll see, I, I expect prices to go down a bit like, um, in the, the upcoming weeks or month. And I, I may be completely wrong about this, but, um, with, uh, the cryptocurrency, uh, frenzy right now, uh, with uh, people buying NFTs for no absolute reason and say, Oh, let's spend a hundred dollar on something I don't like at all, but I think I can make a profit on it. But, yeah. um, I guess we kind of see it already like, uh, Mbappe price going a bit down and, um, and we'll see if, uh, newcomers, um, that have uh, arrived during this kind of frenzy um, will still be pro so rare after the prices have gone down. <laughs> uh, but I guess that um, excuse me. Uh, no, no problem. Nicola and the team have like uh, want to build a game accessible for everyone yeah. and um, uh, playable by everyone. So I wouldn't be too. Uh, let's say scared of for of the future of Osora and um, with the new scarcity, it will also let uh, other people. Because if I talk to my friend and say, "Hey, buy cards," they will say, "Why would I spend 500 euros on a Jupiter Pro League?" <laughs> I mean, Sinan Bolat, <clears throat> never heard of it. Yeah, uh, and he's a great goalkeeper, but you don't you don't know him at all. Um, so yeah, new scarcity will help things, but yeah, so as a great community and uh, I'm grateful for it because um, that's also why I'm here and that's also why you saw that is uh, pretty su successful. Um, it has a great community and uh, even when sometimes people are a bit direct or uh, I don't, I don't know, <laughs> expecting stuff yeah. that are built right now, and fix this, please, now. Um, yeah, it's a great community and a great fun to hang around. I think going back to the goalkeeper thing, um, one of the reasons people like these cards so much is the scarcity. Um, and like fundamentally, there are just not that many of these cards for each player. Um, although I was uh, halfway joking the other day that within 10 years, there are going to be so many Mbappe so rare cards just because they start. He's young and he started. So like he actually will have his scarcity reduce every year because there are more and more. But then we complain about goalkeeper pricing. But like the goalkeepers um, are like the very definition of the scarce resource on a scarce game. So like um, I think 
there's obvious frustration because nobody wants to have to spend, you know, five hundred dollars on a MLS goalkeeper they've never heard of. But if you like the scarcity of the whole concept of so rare cards, then you have to appreciate that they're just not as many goalkeepers. Yep. So that's where the scarcity comes from. But uh, I, I just think it's dumb too. <laughs> I at least yeah, want to say that I think it's awful that we have to spend that much. But I also get that scarcity is the reason why. Yeah, but w what can you do about it? I mean, you need a goalkeeper to build a team. Mm -hmm. And um, the only thing I see is having like a competition when where you can um, like put uh, an extra player at the place of a goalkeeper and uh, have like a 20 to 30 or maybe 50% uh, a penalty on this player and uh, still have the ability to play. Um, or maybe allow goalkeeper comments on every division but at the same time if you change this you uh, you will have people say hey you're giving newcomers an unfair advantage uh, and uh, i don't like it and um i guess we'll see but <laughs> I, I don't think it will change at all i think there's going to be a side game created without goalkeepers <laughs> and i think it's going to fail but I, uh, but I think we're going to see one. Yeah, why not? I mean, who knows? Maybe not on your side we'll, sell, we'll sell all his goalkeepers and I will have to do uh, a Griezmann uh, Cup without goalkeepers. Without goalkeepers, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, I think I'm out of questions and I've taken a, quite a bit of your time already. Um, no problem. But to remind everyone, you... Uh, so rare data is on is the site on the website so rare data uh, so rare data as well on Twitter. Um, yeah. What's the bot uh, address? Is it so rare data bot? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, for those of you who don't follow it, it's fantastic. It shows every uh, auction and secondary and uh, private offer of any card. Is it now three hundred dollars? Yeah. Yeah. And I think I'm going to increase sometime. I actually unfollowed the account from my <laughs> personal account because I was like in the middle of the night, <laughs> you have nothing else yeah. uh, other than so that a bot. It's so, uh, yeah. I remember it used to be 150 and yeah. there was, I would see when I started, there were probably maybe two an hour. And I think at 150, it would just be a constant stream of, yeah, yeah, yeah. of tweets. But anyway, uh, so rare data, bot uh to follow that just if you're curious of like where prices oh, are literally every actually time. it's so rare bot oh so rare bot okay yeah that's right it's because to... so i asked me to do it so oh I okay <laughs> yeah but yeah so that is that um but yeah please uh, everybody's listened um so rare data has just been a fantastic addition uh, to this uh, so rare journey for me and for plenty of people. So, Maxime, thank you for putting this all together. Um, no and problem. Really, we are uh, very appreciative of all your work, uh, especially since this is not your job, which uh, is crazy <laughs> to me that you can do all of this with, with a full-time job. So thank you for that, and thank you for coming on the podcast. Yeah, my pleasure, and thank you for having me. And uh, it's always great to have a great conversation with someone who plays so rare and understand the game as you do. And uh Keep uh, your suggestions coming and uh, hopefully we'll build uh, a feature together soon also. Sounds great. Yeah, thanks.